Well, today we are back looking at some more history. We're going to be looking at that founding father, that pioneer of freedom, James Madison. Look at that. Look at that regal face, that face of just liberty, a lover of liberty. And, uh, you know, what interests me is, is not the history. It's the perception of history. Like, they, they give us the history, and for whatever reason, we have this, like, opinion or this concocted version of what they don't tell us. Or maybe they've just changed it over the years, which is certainly a possibility. They've Winston Smithified everything. But um, we have these opinions that don't make any sense, right? Let, let's read about our good friend James Madison, author of the U.S. Constitution. And I'm not even going to get into that, but... Uh, what do we know about good old James, right? Uh, Princeton College, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, he had an easy fallback position, right? He was the firstborn of a wealthy Southern Virginia plantation-owning guy. You know, this privileged guy. But um, he was very studious, right? He wanted to stay in school and, and um, you know, study. And it says here, you know, he... Five years at boarding school, he learned mathematics and Greek and Latin and all that, and then more great thinkers and da-da-da-da-da. Driven by a thirst for learning, young Madison slept only five hours a night, perhaps undermining his health. No footnote, no work cited. What, what do you mean he only slept five hours? Only five hours? Like, has anyone ever raised children? You ever had a baby in the house, in your house? Like, five hours at night? That, that's not... I mean, what are, what are they trying to portray here? Five hours? Who gets five hours, right? Any business owner, you're, you know, it's crazy. This is ridiculous. Too ill to travel, he hung around Princeton, right? And so we read here that in 1772, he's still adrift. He tried studying law. He tried, but his unimpressive oratorical talents discouraged him. Another failed attempt at something. Instead, he swapped reading lists and ideas about political theory with a Princeton classmate. He couldn't make it as a lawyer, so what did he do? He exchanged ideas and reading lists with an unknown Princeton classmate. That's what he did. He was really busy. He couldn't do it. He couldn't get a job. I'm just going to exchange ideas. This doesn't make any sense. So he struggles for direction. He doesn't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, right? And the winds of change are blowing. You know, the Redcoats and Great Britain, King George. All this is going on. Turmoil. So what does he do? Uh, he goes back to Virginia. Daddy! I need I need to come home, Daddy! Daddy! Daddy Warbucks! He joined his father on the newly formed Committee of Public Safety. Oh, so he joined the, the Committee of Public Safety with Daddy. Well, what about this committee? Let's take a look, right? We've got this committee here going online to figure stuff out. So we have no formal government in play. I, I like the sound of that. That's the first thing I've read that I like. So no formal government. Heck yeah. So the committee became the executive legislation legislative and judicial body. So it's the judge and the executioner, right? So here are some examples of the committee. The great freedom-loving Madisons, that Madison House. Boy, they love their liberty, right? After learning that various persons in the district had tippling houses. Tippling house? What's a tippling house? I don't know what that is. So I come over here and it says uh, a house in which liquors are sold in small quantities, right? To be drunk on the premise. It sounds like a little bar, but it's in your house. What's wrong with that, right? Well, we can't have that, says the committee. Right, the committee resolved that no person could sell or retail liquor without a certificate from the committee. Sounds like today. You know, the mob bosses, hey, we want to we want to get in on that action, man. We don't want to stop it. We want to get a cut, right? So you got to get a certificate from the Committee of Freedom, uh, Public Safety. Oh, the Madison, they got their hand in everything, right? What, do, what happened to all that liberty and all that freedom? You know, uh, let the people do what they want. Well, you got to get a certificate from the committee, right? So the committee is the court, you know, all these examples of what they do. 
And then we find here in August 1776, right? Re revolution running hot. Revolution's going on. We're fighting on American soil against the enemy. You, 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 okay, I'm trying to set the stage here. War, Lexington and Concord, that's 1775, right? Bunker Hill, all this stuff going on. Well, the board decided, you know, they resolved that committee men and militia officers had the power to stop and bring before the committee all persons found traveling on the Sabbath who could not give a reasonable account for their doing so. We've got a war going on, but we've got to uphold this law, put more people in jail, fine them. You know, they don't tell you, but you get penalized, right? You're traveling on the, on the Sabbath. Well, great, great Lord and tarnation. You are going to be jailed and fined for that. Oh, by the way, we're fighting a war. You know, why aren't these committee guys out there in the mud with the musket? You know what I mean? What else do we have? Oh, they ruled on adultery. 1777, right? We got Saratoga going on. You know, the battle that tipped it all, brought the French in. You know, this is after what, the Battle of Princeton and Trenton, the Hessians, you know, George Washington. We're out there. We're just hanging by a thread, man. Hanging by a thread. The revolution is just teetering on the brink. Oh, man, we're not going to win. So what's the committee up to? What? Adultery? Hannah? We got we to gotta get Hannah Capron accused of leaving her husband and children and brought before the board. God, it makes me... It's just like, if it's even real. I, don't, I shouldn't get worked up about it, but I'm just like... My blood pressure is getting upset. You know, these guys are out there fighting and dying. And then these these stay-at-home, wealthy, do what they want. We got a rule in this case. Adultery. So what are they going to decide, right? Um, the committee ordered that she be publicly whipped on the back with 20 lashes. <laughs> what? Did we leave Great Britain... You know, in all that place because of, like, oppression? <laughs> what is going on? This is a woman. We got her. And that she be branded. Well, the, whip, the lashes aren't enough. We got we to gotta up it. What, what, are we gonna, what do we want to do, Daddy Madison? What are we going to do? All right, sonny boy, James. We're going to brand her on her forehead with the letter A. A for idiot. You know, for, for coming over here, for being a part of this. Branded on the a, with an A on the forehead. And she's got to wear a rope around her neck during life and libel to be whipped 20 lashes each time she was seen without the rope. What the heck is going on? This is during the war. This is during the whole conflict, like right in the middle of it. And this is what they're spending their time. Daddy! This is what the Madisons are up to, I guess. I mean, according to, to, the, to the history. So what else do we got? The committees, of course, bought public safety. Here's what they do, right? These committees took on more than customary local governance. They enforced, they enforced boycotts. They picked army draftees. They picked them. And they policed suspected traitors. You know, you, we're, we're, we're living in paranoia. You know, you, you, you accuse someone of being a loyalist, right? And, oh, man, you know, it'd be like going out and accusing somebody of, of, of saying a bad word or whatever. You know, then everyone, oh, it's sort of shame. Shame on you. They picked army draftees. That's, I mean, oh, are you coming with us, Madison's? No. And then they have this story down here with no footnote, as always. Some, some disgruntled loyalist. You know, choose your committee or suffer it, right? Um, by a half dozen fools. They're going to show up in your neighborhood, open your door, they're going to come into your house and, and go through everything, right? If you're suspected of being, you know, not a patriot, but a Tory or a loyalist. Or someone who's not even, uh, I don't want anything to do with it. I fought in the French and Indian War. Uh, I don't want any part of it. So th this is the um, this is the committee, All right? So let's go back to what we, we we initially started, right? So here we got the Madisons 
on their newly formed committee doing what they do, right? And so um, the 24-year-old, he took up musket practice in 1775. Oh, right. But his continued poor health ruled out a soldier's life. Oh, man. His poor health due to, I guess, not sleeping enough or whatever. They don't tell us here. Maybe he had something else going on. Irritable bowels. Who knows, right? How convenient, though. He couldn't, couldn't soldier on. Couldn't join the cause, man. Couldn't pick up his musket or his rifle and get out there and, you know, head off where the, the bullets meet the bone. He's going to stay here. And uh, his special talent was politics, the science of politi- politician. This is, what he, this is his claim to fame. He's a politician. And he, and he got elected to the Virginia Convention, a revolutionary assembly of assembled people that are not going to go fight for the most part. Right, so they're going to do whatever they do, right? Shy, self-effacing, and still learning the ropes. He mostly stayed on the sidelines, but he was learning. And then he wrote the U.S. Constitution, and we could put that out here, and I have no problem with the U.S. Constitution. It'd be great if they followed it, but it's certainly not like, it's not that, I'm not going to get into that. Anyway, down here we see that he was 29 almost 29, unmarried, supported by his father's money. He was free of the burden, whatever. How do these people attain such a level of honor? Hero worship. You know, like, um, why? These privileged do-nothings that go around branding women traveling on the Sabbath, getting into everyone's business. What are we doing? What, what do we honor these people? What, what? Of course, you can't point this out, right? I mean, but it's right here in the history book. How can you not read this and, and have like, uh, wait a minute, what? What the heck is going on? I thought these were the lovers of liberty and the freedom. and You know, they, they saved this world. We're the last great hope. Makes no sense, right? I mean, and who even knows if it's real? I wasn't there. You weren't there. We weren't there. Who knows? Anyway, that's all we got. I'll leave it at that. Much going on in the world. (laughs) Heard somebody got a little sick lately. Someone's a little ill these days, from what I hear. Like, like they would, like they would tell us. You know, if if certain somebody in the country, I'd say like uh, the leader of the free world. If he were sick, like they'd come out and tell us, right? <laughs> Whatever. That's it, the end. That's all I got.